Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Stafford Report. I'm Cindy Dunnigan, your host. We are going to cover a lot of ground today. We're going to interview some students from the Human Services Program and talk about some of the work they're doing with a student organization. We are going to meet some students from the STEM program, and STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. We have a few videos to show you, and we're going to give you some updates about things that are going on around the building. Last time, we talked a little bit about our leaf raking day, and we have a brand new leaf raking video from this year with our fancy new red shirts, so we're going to watch that now. I appreciate them coming to the salon because I can't do it at my age. <laughs> I'm 85, so. This is a wonderful opportunity for the uh, youth to serve the community and be, be show that you're part of the whole town. And it saves us senior people a lot of work raking that uh, would take a long time. And so I really appreciate it and thank you. STEM program, students have the opportunity to study engineering. The focus is on engineering. We use a curriculum from Project Lead the Way, which is a nationwide recognized curriculum. They do four modules over two years, and we're going to meet some students from that program next. All right, sitting with me today, I have two STEM students. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Um, education people throw the term around a lot, and not everyone knows what it means. I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, tell me your name, your grade, and your sending school. Hi, I'm Chase Burrington. I come from Mill River, and I'm a junior. Okay. Hey, I'm Isabella Tenebarel. I am a junior, and I come from West Rutland. All right, so both of you came from uh, sending, all of our students come from sending schools. We have nine sending schools. Why Stafford? Why did you decide to apply to Stafford? Uh, I wanted more hands-on learning, and uh, I knew I wanted to be an engineer and just wanted to discover it deeper. Um, for me, I've always loved animals, so I, and all, I was also really good at math, so I wanted to kind of combine them, so I wanted to become an engineer for animals. An engineer for animals? I've never heard of such a thing. Like, uh, like, like a robotics engineer. I like design um, prosthetics for them. For animals? Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So like if my dog gets hit by a car and has to have his leg amputated, you're going to yeah. work on... I'll, I'll make the prosthetic for his leg. That's awesome. Does it get covered with like fake fur? It does, yeah. Wow, that would probably cost extra. Yeah. Um, so you've left your high schools. You're both juniors, so you had two years in high school behind you. Do you miss your friends? Not really. Technology makes it pretty easy to stay in touch, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, so STEM, you both have very different interests. What is a typical day like in the STEM program? Tell me about your walk-in and what happens. Uh, we usually, usually get right into work. Um, we come to desk. Yeah, it's different. It's a lot of times it's different every day. It's not the same thing. You're doing a bunch of different stuff. And uh, sometimes it can be tedious, and but you usually learn it pretty quick and do excel at it after that. So. Yeah. Are you working at your own speed? or? Uh, we usually work at a class speed. Um, but usually in the mornings, um, we go over what we are going to do that day, or our homework, or a test. Mm -hmm. um, and then once that's out of the way, we kind of get into a new activity, a new project. So can you tell me about the unit you just finished? Like, what have you been working on? We've been working on CAD lately. 
And that's oh. computer-aided drafting, correct? Gra yeah. Drawing, design, see? What do um, I know? I was trying to make it up. Um, and at first, I think for a lot of people, it was really tedious. It's hard to work with. But then afterward, you start working with it a lot more, and people got it a lot more. So. Yeah. And that's where you hear the term learning curve. It's, it's the learning curve. You know, it takes a long time. But once you get it, then you're really making progress, right? Yeah. What program do you use for your CAD? Uh, we use Autodesk Inventor. Autodesk. Inventor. Autodesk Inventor. And are you starting a new unit? Have you finished that CAD unit? We um, finished that and we're moving yeah. on to a new unit right now. And we're what in is the transition period? Okay. Yeah. Do you know what the next unit is? It's density. Yeah. Density. So, so like whether or not things part. float and yeah. sink yeah, and, yeah, and how like to calculate how mass. dense stuff is and And yeah. how do you think that plays into being an engineer? Well, you need to know the specific dimension. Uh, like density and stuff. Like if you're building um, a bridge, you need to know how dense the materials is, and if like, cause it all it plays into the structure. So if it's like really heavy, then you need to find support. But if so if you were making a prosthetic limb for an animal, you wouldn't want to use something that would be much much heavier than their natural yeah. limb because they would have trouble lifting it up or moving it. And then in building and design all the weight of the building would come into play. Is that? Yeah. yeah. OK. I'm not, I'm not super smart with STEM, but my son was in the STEM program for two years. And so some of these terms I've heard before and I have passing knowledge with, not enough. You probably guys already know more than I do. What are your plans after Stafford? I, um, I'm actually thinking about that really hard. Um, I was thinking about taking a year off, but then going to um, college. Um, Probably a college with robotics, um, robotic engineering. Now, are you part of the robotics team? Uh, no, but I'm going to join. You're joining first robotics. And so you're thinking of a gap year. That's the educational term for taking a year off. Do you want to travel or work? Or I was thinking about working. Working. And what are your plans for after uh, Stafford? Oh, so I'm in Upper Bound, so. Oh, nice. kind of try to put you in that direction. So that's where I'm going. Excellent. So do you have a college picked out or still kind of? No, nope, still looking. I know they take you to visit quite a few. Yep. You have a lot of opportunity with, with that program to get out and see colleges. And you spend a lot of time over at the Castleton campus? Yep, yep. Did you do the summer program last year? I did, yep. Nice. Did you have fun with that? Yeah, it's, it's a fun experience. It gets you ready for uh, what college is actually going to be like. So. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you both for joining me. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me about STEM before we... Uh, well, it's really fun, except for the math part of it. Okay, that's not something you generally hear from <laughs> students, but my son would say the same thing. He loves math. Anything else you want to add? Any uh, props to your instructor or anything? You want to wave to Mr. Babb? Mr. Babb is a fun teacher. Mr. Yeah, Babb yeah, is, is a fun teacher. You People guys should join STEM. You should. Good class. should. Everyone should join. Everyone should join. Bella, do you feel out of place being a girl in that program? No, we have three girls already. Yeah, so it's not a big deal. Sometimes people think engineering is only for men. We hope to... The people don't believe that, but you do hear it sometimes. So, but I like to think that it's actually better to be a female because then you can actually like show them up. Like so there you go. You've got goals, life yeah. goals. Show them up. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure having you on the show today. Lights, camera, action. Explore your imagination, creating short films, skits, and commercials. You can get certified in Premiere, After Effects, and more. You can get hands-on work in the classroom and out in the field with our broadcast mobile setups and our top-of-the-line cameras. Create, critique, and communicate. Come to Video Communication. For more information, you can go to staffordonline.org. In the Human Services program, students study human development from birth right through to death. Our students also work in our on-site preschool center, with their little friends, and we're going to talk to four students from that program and learn a little bit more about what their day is like. Can you introduce yourself, your name, your grade, your sending school? I'm Emily, and I am a senior, and I'm from Fairhaven. I'm Desiree. I'm a senior, and I'm from Rutland. Now, you're seniors. Were you both in Human Services last year? Yes. So you liked it enough to come back? Yes. 
couldn't wait. <laughs> All right, so I want to hear a little bit about a typical day because I see a lot of stuff going on. Sometimes when I walk in there, I see people in one side of the room working on all kinds of stuff, and then sometimes you're in the preschool with the children. So can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Um, so a typical day in class is it's mostly book work, and you work out of a book all day. You take a break, and then you do like lesson plans or you take a test, and basically you just and doing book work all day long. Okay. And in the preschool with the lesson plans that you made during your day in class, you do those with the preschoolers. So you are playing with the preschoolers all day, you go outside, you eat lunch with them, and you also make lunch for all of the preschoolers. And that's basically it. So what's your favorite part about working in the preschool? Being yeah. able to talk to them. Going outside. Going outside. We have a pretty nice playground out there for them. Yeah, I know they go over to our assistant director's window and they can talk to her through the window, so that's kind of fun. I love going in the preschool because everyone just runs over to me. They're always so happy to see mm -hmm. me. So how do you have a bad day in the preschool? You can't. You have all those little smiling faces coming up to you. Um, so book work. Everyone thinks Stafford is so hands-on, but you're telling me like every other day you're doing book work and you're learning about human development from birth right all the way through, right? Right to mm -hmm. death. The mm -hmm. whole gamut. Um, do either of you have any interest in working with older people? Somewhat. Somewhat? Yeah. Are Not you going to do a co-op for maybe yeah. a nursing home or something? Everybody I mean? who um, works in human services, they have to do an elderly unit. So when they go to co-op, they have to do an elderly unit and any um, place that they want to for a second choice. And do you um, have any experience with that? I don't. You I don't. do. You do? But it's not your favorite? No. No, that was never <laughs> my favorite either, but I've gotten used to it. Um, and we certainly need people who do that kind of care. We need people to take care of little people, and we need people to take care of older people as well. So do you have plans for after Stafford? What are you thinking about, Emily? Um, well, I'm thinking about going to CSJ or Castleton and going forward to um, special education for all ages. So like I can <coughs> work with any grade level that they need me for. Nice. That's a lot of work. What about you, Desiree? Um, I'm thinking about going to CSJ to become a preschool teacher. Nice. That's what I used to do. I used to teach preschool. I did that for 14 years, so I know all about that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> um, so did the preschoolers help with our leaf raking day we had last month? I saw them out there for the picture. They actually um, were doing it in their like little area that they have in the playground. Oh, so. fun. Did they like that? Yeah, they did. And they didn't really seem interested. They seemed more interested on playing on the equipment than picking up the wet leaves on the ground. Well, desk. yeah, it wasn't the best day as far as dry, fluffy yeah. leaves to mm -hmm. jump in piles or anything like that. Um, so we talked about our leaf raking day last time when we were on, and we actually carried that out very successfully. And we were, the little preschoolers were outside in the front with us, um, dressed in their little matching shirts, just like the, their big friends. And uh, we were pretty happy to have them out there for the picture. They looked as they looked so cute. And I saw some little tiny rakes mm -hmm. somewhere, and I was like, "Oh, that's so cute!" I want to thank you two for uh, coming in and talking to me. And I think I have two more of your classmates who are going to talk to me about something just a little bit different. So we are going to have them come over and join us. All right, I have two other students here with me now from Human Services. Can you ladies introduce yourselves? I'm Shauna Heyer. I am from. Rutland High School and I'm a junior. I'm Liani Bohannon. I'm from Rutland High School and I'm also a junior. Both juniors. First year in the program? I'm a first year. I'm the second, second year. year. Okay. Why Stafford? Um, I'm really interested in going into social work and also I heard like a lot of really good things about Stafford so I decided to try out the human services program because I also love working with children so um, it would help me go towards my social work but it would also give me a chance to work with children. Um, I want to be a preschool teacher after I graduate, and I want to follow in my mom's footsteps. And my mom also did Stafford for oh, two wow. years, and so did my older sister. So the whole family. Yeah. Bring them all in. All right, I'm going to read here. You guys have on red, and our other guests also are wearing red. So you're all members of FCCLA, and I copied right from their website their uh, kind of their mission and some information about them. I'm going to read that, and then we're going to talk to you about 
your positions with FCCLA and something exciting you did recently. So Family Career and Community Leaders of America is a nonprofit national career and technical student organization for young men and women in family and consumer sciences education in public and private schools through grade 12. Everyone is part of a family and FCCLA is the only national career and technical student organization with family as its focus. And one of their slogans for this year is be inspired by FCCLA as you lead others, develop new skills, explore career opportunities, build strong families, and give back to your communities. Shine in red, make a difference, inspire. So that's some of the core values of FCCLA, and you're both officers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what have you done as part of the organization? Well, recently we went to a conference in Washington, D.C., but um, like right now locally we are doing a food drive to get meals for families who can't afford to pay for Thanksgiving meals and come Christmas time we're going to be doing um, this thing with a foster child. We're going to get him presents and help pay for things for him since his family probably can't afford it. Do you have anything to add to that? No. <laughs> no? So. I know last year there, uh, you did a food drive, you, you did a bunch of other activities in the school and outside in the community, and you raise all this money so that you can go to conferences and other things, and the conference was in Washington, D.C. Yes. Have you ever been to Washington, D.C.? No. I went, yes, once. You went once? Yes. Did you have a great time? I saw some photos, and you mm -hmm. guys looked really happy, and you, did you learn a lot? Like, what, do you, what did you do at the conference? Um, we listened to two keynote speakers. There was a, two conferences, one Friday and one Saturday. And Friday night, we listened to a keynote speaker named David Edward Garcia, and he was a comedian. And the next night, we listened to a woman named Jessica Funk, who is a singer. Wow, and what did they speak about? Um, they kind of just told us some of their backstories about like how they got to be like the type of speakers they are and just like, Really, the, they were just there to inspire us and like, can you know, kind of just encourage us to keep doing what we're doing and helping others and like being part of FCCLA and to keep gathering together to help others in our community, our schools, and like nationwide. Like there was um, FCCLA groups from all over, not just from like Vermont or there was like even some kids there from Alaska. Like there was. Wow really a wide variety. And you're in a special position because FCCLA really doesn't have a chapter in Vermont and no. you are able to participate through kind of an agreement with a New Hampshire chapter, yeah. which is fantastic for, for you to be able to take part in this even though we don't have a Vermont chapter, so to speak. And I know that your program instructor works really hard to keep those connections with New Hampshire strong so that you can participate in this great student organization. And it's going to look awesome for both of you when you apply to colleges and get jobs to say that you are active members of this organization. And um, do you have anything else you'd like to tell us about your program or your plans or FCCLA? Mm -hmm. um, I think FCCLA is a really good opportunity for us because not only do we get to help other people, but we also learn a lot. Like, I know that just going to that one conference I really learned a lot and I was really inspired by some of the things that I heard there and I think it's just great and I'm really glad that our school gets to be part of it. And did you do any fun things while you were in Washington DC or were you just at the conference center the whole time? We did some fun things. Um, the last night before we left we did um, monument seeing where it, all the monuments were lit up and we got to go learn about them and take pictures and stuff like that. And how did you get there? Did you have to ride a school bus? We rode this premier bus. There was like seven premier buses. Oh wow. Because everyone who was in the, at the conference went on the tour buses. And how did you get to the conference? We went on an airplane. Wow, so you have some uh, good funds there to help support that? Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you both for joining me today. I was glad to hear a little bit about your activities with FCCLA, and I wish you the best success as you move forward. Thank you. Thank you.
not only do we work with kids and play with them too, we learn about nutrition and healthy living. We run a full day preschool program and we earn college credits while doing it. Let's go! For more information, you can go to staffordonline.org. In some other news around the building, we had two digital art students enter some art in an art show at Castleton University, and two of them won. So congratulations to Lily Crowley and Dylan Beebe. Great job showing your art over at Castleton University. We also recently had some Rutland Town eighth graders come through and visit our school so they could get an idea of the fun things that happen at Stafford. Each student was able to visit two pro three programs and spend about 40 minutes in each program and learn a little bit more about Stafford. At the end of their visit, I asked them, how many of you think Stafford's in your future? And of the 32 kids who came to visit, 31 of them raised their hand. I thought that was pretty good. I want to remind you that you can follow us on social media. We're active on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we encourage you to follow us along and see what's going on in the school. We post a lot of photos and a lot of information. You can also always check us out online at staffordonline.org. Stafford Technical Center is preparing our students for their future careers and college. With hands-on learning in our 14 programs, our students have the opportunity to study in the fields of art and communications, agriculture and natural resources, engineering and technical systems, health and human services. All this is possible while still taking your academic classes. To start your career, go to staffordonline.org, where your success starts here. One of the things we hear sometimes about Stafford is that some people think Stafford is a school for students who aren't going to college. Well, that can't be true because today we're having a college fair right down the hall from our studio. We have 18 colleges re represented and every program is visiting the college fair today to learn about their options in college. And speaking of college, last year we had 99 seniors graduate. We surveyed them six months later and we found out that 41% uh, of them were in secondary educa post-secondary education and 49% of them are working. So those are pretty good statistics for our graduates. So we're excited to remind you that college is always an option if you come to Stafford. You might choose a career that takes you directly into the workforce. You might enter an apprenticeship program like many of our electricians and plumbers do. But you may also decide to go on to college. Many of our STEM students and health career students um, choose to go on to college. The video media student students tend to go on to college. And I have to give a big shout out to my A-team of Nick, Dan, and Ryan who helped make this show possible, who take good care of me when I forget what I'm doing, which does happen. They edit it all out beautifully and you would never know that it happened. Um, so we wanna, we wanna thank you for joining us and watching this episode of the Stafford Report. If you wanna schedule a visit or a tour of our center, please give us a call and we'll be happy to arrange that for you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.